Let me start setting the scene by saying how we see the world, okay? So first thing is that, of course, the world we live in is a done, well, I've skipped ahead. I seem to have inherited the skipping ahead thing. Let me go back. There we are, okay. So first of all, we live in a world where it's evolving threat landscape. There's new threats all the time. And at the same time, there's so many people that will help us solve this problem of information security. Now this year at InfoSec, I counted 360 exhibitors. That's 360 people saying we will solve this information security problem for you. And I was standing there thinking, you know what? If I wasn't in the industry, if I was a customer, I would think, <laughs> guys, come on. You must be kidding me. Where do we even start solving this problem? At the same time, you know, of course, this technology is giving us lots of alerts and we see lots of problems. And you can see here 17,000 security alerts. Now, we have a, a, a threat monitoring practice. And a typical customer will receive 17,000 alerts a week. That's a lot of alerts. Now, at the same time, you know, a big breach coverage continue. And I, I don't know about you, but I'm very rapidly approaching the stage of you know, Samuel L. Jackson in Pulp Fiction. You know, mention the BA breach one more time, expletive of choice. And the thing is, with these breaches, when they happen, they get a lot of coverage, and very often the wrong conclusions are drawn. You know, and, and very often, the 360 people that provide security solutions will come to you and say, well, of course, if BA used our technology, if you did this, this would not have happened. But in the reality, in most cases, the breaches are simple. You saw this morning that it doesn't take an advanced state actor to do something brand new. It's trivial, simple things that we will, that's well understood. And which is why, you know, if you look in the UK, and this is from the most reach, recent breach report, UK focused, 72% um, of businesses in the UK were breached last year. So clearly something is wrong here. Now, of course, um, and this is where the lions come in. As you can tell, I'm from South Africa. And uh, there's a very popular analogy in information security, which is this, that you, know, you don't have to outrun the lion. You just have to outrun your friend. Apparently, in the UK, you talk about a bear in the wood. So when you're running away from a bear, you don't have to outrun the bear. You just have to outrun your friend. Now, why is this popular? It's popular because it makes us think there's a causal relationship between what we do and what happens to us. So we get up every morning, we watch our feeds, we implement good technology, we do the right things, and if we do that, those pesky hackers will find other people out there. And it's popular, it's causal, it's nice, it's, it's reassuring, it makes us think that we're in control. The reality, though, is that <laughs> it's not working out that well for us. You know, the compromises continue. You know, if I think of the, um, the lion as hackers out there and a poor villa beast, and by the way, it's always a villa beast that gets caught. And the reason is they're quite stupid animals. What they do, they're very curious. When they see a bunch of lions, they go and wander up to them to see what's going on, which is why they're normally a victim of, of the poor lions. Now, the thing is, why is these hacks continuing? Why do these breaches continue? The first thing is, when we try to understand it, the first obvious answer is we need better technology. If we had an IPS, if we had a, like a SIM system, if we had a, uh, you know, a sandboxing technology, this would have protected us. First thing. The next thing is we, we say, OK, well, of course, the technology is part of the picture. We need smart people. We need to hire smart people. We need to educate them. We need to just find those smart people. The next thing is what we're saying is like after BA, we need strict regulation. PCI DSS, GDPR. Government needs to play a role. You know, let's transfer the, let's transfer the problem. It's, it's government's issue. The next step is that, of course, we say, after these things, if we just talk to each other a lot more, understand how these pesky hackers operate, and understand what's happened, this will help us secure against the future breaches. And the last thing, of course, which is not a very popular thing in our industry, is that we suck. We suck at this information security thing. And the reality is we do. You know, if, if you think about it, we're probably one of the few industries, well, apart from British Rail and uh, the NHS, we spend more money every year, yet our outcomes get, get worse. And that's just not right. So I think there's another option here, uh, which is that actually we probably need better analogies. And for me, the analogy that I want to bring to you is this. It's about the bull run in Pamplona. And basically, the bull run is 800 yards out of panic. You know, got seven steers in front, seven bulls, and seven steers at the back. 
and a lot of people running on this area. So we think of the bulls as these hackers or the threat actors and think of the people running as businesses. Now, of course, you get different kinds of businesses in our industry. So, um, you know, you get the methodical ones, you get the, the naive and dying ones, nobody's going to want to hack me. You get the very fast professional ones. And of course, you get these different kinds of businesses, and they all inhabit this space. At the same time, you also get different kinds of threat actors, different bulls, if you wish. And, uh, you know, all the way from the um, young and enthusiastic bull, he's just gone into YouTube, he's just learned how to hack, and he's now applying his newfound skill. That's a talk talk guy, guys, in case you're wondering who that guy was. That's him. Okay, and then you've got the opportunistic bull, he's stumbled across Amazon Bucket. You've got the uh, <laughs> professional running bull, they're working together criminals. And then lastly, you've got the state sponsored super bull. Now, I've talked about this bull in the past, okay? Now, this bull's been able, he's been bench pressing his own weight in bull since the age of two, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, he's very determined, a lot of resource. In case, that's the bull on the left here. And that's a buffalo, by the way, guys. I know, I'm from Africa. <laughs> so, this bull, if this bull's out to get you, that's it, you've had it. And, and the reality is, if you look at this, this very chaotic world, you know, this internet with different kinds of businesses and different kinds of threat actors, against the backdrop of um, what's happening where the threat landscape's changing, the ways that people get compromised change, the fact that more and more of our businesses are going onto the internet, our business processes are becoming more and more digital, at the same time as regulatory upheaval, and we all, sh all inhabit this space. And you know, at the same time, you've got these super actors, you know, the, the state-sponsored Super Bowls. You've got normal businesses. The reality is that you, know, you can outrun some of the bulls some of the time, but you can't outrun all of the bulls all the time. And this is our industry. So you know, when you hear people say, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. This is what we're talking about here. And for me, the notion of thinking that you have 100% protection the notion that you can outrun all these bulls all the time. It's just not right. Sometimes the bulls have more resources than you do. Mostly they've got more resources than, than you do. Or if not, they just need to be lucky once. And, and I think we need to shift the conversation a little bit to think of it in that, that kind of way. In real life, I don't expect never to become a victim of crime, do I? You kind of plan for it, you, know, you insure against it, and you take the right measures to, to detect it fairly quickly. So, Let's, on that theme, let's, let's go further. So the big picture stuff is behind me here. Now, our business follow these eight things, you know, just as the big picture things that we think is changing in our industry. You know, just very quickly, you know, first of all, criminals are starting to make money out of hacking. That wasn't true for the first 15 years of my career in, in information security. Now there's ways of actually monetizing what they do very effectively. You know, uh, the endpoint is becoming the new battleground, exploiting features on the endpoint. You know, um, governments are spending a lot of money on cybersecurity, which of course add tools and techniques into this bubble, which inflates the whole thing. Um, insurance, I think insurance will start playing an increasing role in cybersecurity. You know, if, if you know you can't write around all the bulls all the time, what do I do? I insure against those eventuality, and you'll start seeing use of insurance a lot more going forward. And of course, legislation will continue, and I think governments will start playing a much, much a bigger role in enforcing insurance. And already we're starting to, uh, compliance. Already we're starting to see it, you know, with the, the, the UK government and Barclays and AstraZeneca and a few others saying that if you want to do business with us, you need to be Cyber Essentials accredited. Because that's the one lever governments can pull, is insurance and regulation. And I think we're going to start seeing them pulling that lever a lot more going forward. Machine learning, which I won't talk about, you know, both offensively and defensively, and lastly, balkanization. Balkanization is this whole sense about buying kit that I know the provenance of. You know, so for instance, you know, when Kaspersky was implicated in uh, stealing some UK government cyber tools, uh, Huawei recently with the teleco providers, we're going to start seeing people start worrying a lot more about where stuff is made. And again, these are the eight things we think are the bigger picture things. So now, taking a step further, if I think of the threat landscape and this elephant here, I know it's not a lion, it's not a bull. Well, it's a bull elephant, you know, so I guess it kind of counts. <laughs> so, so if I think of the threat landscape that I have as a business, how do most businesses, um, you know, operate with this? We buy technology, you know, great technology that will help us protect against these pesky threat actors out there. And this kind of, kind of parts of our threat landscape. Not all of it, you know, so we have some residual risk, those little edges there that the circle doesn't cover. 
The next thing we then do is we say, okay, fine. We know we can't protect everything. Let's hire a firm to assess our risk. That will do a pen test. That will tell us how the bad guys will get to us. And that will tell us some other areas that we now potentially protect ourselves against. And we know that that doesn't cover everything. So now we need to start putting threat detection in place. Because we, need, we know that it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when there will be an issue. So let's detect it. But of course, we also do know that that won't cover everything, so we need to have instant response in place. So when something bad happens, we can actually do something about it. We can detect it, and we can actually act and limit the damage from the, that. The reality, though, is that for most businesses, <laughs> the tax service is probably bigger than they expect. And a lot of the compromises attack something that they weren't aware of, that they had. You know, if you think of the Sony Acts, if I think of a lot of the businesses, you know, stuff was compromised that they weren't even aware they, they had. And we kind of go through this whole cycle of buying technology and everything else. But I thought of five, five minutes. Sorry. Sorry. Five minutes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good. 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 Good test. Okay. So, um, so of course. Um, uh, so now the thing is, and and this is the the thing that I think it's important to realise that in this world, if we buy the hypothesis that that we can't outrun all the bulls, and that the odds are a little bit stacked against us. It's important to, to have the ability to detect these issues. Okay? And to do that properly, you, you need to do it for a defensive reason, I need to do it for a compliance reason, and I need to do it for a readiness reason. Let's talk about defense first. Uh, and for any good business to have a good sound cyber strategy, you need to be able to assess risk, detect issues, protect your environment, and have the ability to respond. So it's important to have the detection in place. And the question you're answering here is that, Will I be able to detect threats reliably? Will I be able to detect compromises reliably? And that's not an easy question to, to answer. The next thing is, of course, if there's an issue, I need to be able to answer this very simple question. Did I take all reasonable measures to protect my customer's data? And not a lot of people can actually say that. You know, again, in the case of the unnamed breach, that wasn't the case. They did not comply to the relevant standard. In particular, they failed the PCI DSS audit just before, before the compromise. And then lastly, and this is also important to realize, that in order to do detection properly, it's not just about detecting threats. It's about being ready when there is an issue, so you know what happened. So you can actually look at the data, understand the extent of the threat. You know, when TalkTalk Talk was compromised, Talk, talk, we're able to figure out what was compromised by running the same queries Hacker did. Not by looking at their systems. So they had to run the same database queries Hacker did in order to detect what, what, what was stolen. That's just not, not right, you know. So it's more about, it's also about the, the ability to be prepared for a compromise. Now, of course, how do we do this? The four Ps are important, you know, process, people, platform, and uh, project management. A lot of people will focus on the platform aspect, the technology, but actually, the people and the processes is more important. In other words, having the right people there and following consistent processes that will take the data in, look at all the feeds from all the security devices, understand what it means, and be able to, to act on it, which is where the, the process bit comes into it. Now, to do so, you need to have the right level of skill within the organization. And the thing is, to, do, to track the right level of skill, to keep them motivated, is quite difficult. For us personally, you know, we tend to grow our own skill. You know, we get people working in the operations center and they grow through because it takes a number of years to understand what bad looks like, to understand what is benign, what's not benign, to, to, to investigate it. And you can't just do that with technology. Anybody that tells you it's only technology is, 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 is wrong about that. And then lastly, you need to be agile. You need to have the ability to respond to fresh attacks and new ways of attacking. You know, detection systems are not monolithic. If somebody tells you the solution will, will put the solution in, this will adapt, I would not believe them because the threat actors don't behave in the same way. The way that people get attacked keeps, keeps changing. So, so you need to have the ability to actually uh, respond and change your behavior based on what's going on out there. From our point of view, we, we have a research organization that will look at the latest threats and look at the latest ways that people attack uh, our customers and then adapt our, our, our system accordingly. So, which brings me to the last thing. You know, why do you uh, partner with a specialist firm? I guess the, the first thing is they do the basics right all the time. And with threat detection, it's as much about the basics as it is about the advanced attacks. Look at the logs of the web server. Look at authentication. Look, look at all the, the alerts. Understand 
there we are. There's my wake-up call there. Understand, understand what, what normally is, okay? Then the next thing is, you know, um, are they able to cover the whole area? And lastly, do they, are they actually quite a close fit to organization? Are they big enough to, to, to have the resources to deal with stuff, but also are they small enough to actually understand my intense requirements? Now, in order, this is my last slide, and uh, then, then we're done. I think for me, I'm gonna put six things here, which I think you need to think about when you think about how do I go about detecting threats in my organization? How do I find those, those lions that, that are out there to get, to get me? How do I find those bulls that are out there to get me? The first thing is be deliberate. You need to be able to, to know what you're looking for and do it consistently and in a very deliberate fashion. Be judicious in your deployment of technologies, not a technology play only. You know, it's more important to have the process right and to, to know what you're looking for and do it in a very persistent way. Be structured. You know, be research-led. It's important to pull in information from what's going on out there so actually you can adapt your detection strategy to what the real threat is at the moment. You know, three months ago it was crypto mining. Ransomware is back because crypto mining doesn't make as much money anymore. So you need to understand where the current threat vector is. And then lastly, be transparent to the business. Threat detection is not a silver bullet. It's not going to stop you being compromised. It will just buy you some time to pick it up a lot quicker. And on that note, I'm done. Etienne, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> really good. Okay. You have questions for Etienne in the Q&A session later. It's now my great pleasure to introduce a dear friend, somebody I've shared the conference platform, the speaking platform for nearly 20 years. Uh, she is French, the same nationality as my new wife, and we meet all over the place. And uh, it is Nira Jones. Nira, like me, is an evangelist on cybersecurity, information assurance, information security, CompuSec, CompSec, you name it. We've stood shoulder to shoulder evangelizing over this wonderful subject. She's got a checkered history. She was nominated as the top chief cyber security officer to follow on Twitter in April 2014. She was elevated to the Infrasecurity uh, Hall of Fame alongside me. Uh, on my recommendation, she joined me as a fellow of the British Computer Society. And she has a vast array of experience in this world. She does tend to talk a lot. She does tend to go over time. And I've had to take her aside to uh, really make sure she keeps to uh, her brief today. Nira, mon chéri. Voilà, 